So, you know, people like Richard Dawkins, who I had a run in with, people like Michael Shermer, uh, who heads a society for skeptics, who uh, had to debate at Caltech. Yeah. Um, listening to me, they frequently said, you misuse science uh, to um, propagate your theories. And um, now that I'm having a conversation with a professor, a scientist, an anesthesiologist who puts people to sleep and <laughs> wakes, gets them, them wakes them up afterwards, um, uh, what would you say to these guys who say you're full of it? They're, they're full of it. And, uh, no, they're, they're saying you're full of it. <laughs> well, they're full of it. That's what I'm saying. Because <clears throat> their, their, uh, their solution to the hard problem is to ignore it or to say, well, it emerges at a higher order of complexity. Don't bother me with the details. That'll come along. Or to pretend it doesn't exist. So their approach is to look at the brain as a computer and pretend the problem of consciousness that we're discussing doesn't exist whatsoever. So if you have the machinery to do what the brain does, then you have consciousness along with it. And that could be true if you, in, that is true if you include the quantum properties. But they're cutting it off at the level, not only at the level of classical versus quantum, but at the level of uh, uh, neurons versus going inside neurons. So they're, I think they're missing the boat entirely. And there's so many questions they couldn't answer, but they won't debate me. I've they, they've criticized me and I've challenged them to debate me and they, all, they always chicken out. Hmm. So is the universe conscious? Hmm. I would say it's proto consciousness. Proto conscious. It's kind of, it's kind of dreaming. It, it has this this uh, pure consciousness, perhaps built into it, uh, but without uh, the snapshots of awareness. That only happens when this particular type of self collapse or objective reduction. So something is dreaming up the universe. Well, you could say that. Or would, could we call it God? I, you know, I, I I wouldn't have a problem with that. I uh, I think you know when you talk about God and spirituality, I, I think of three things. There's there's interconnectedness among living beings, which you can explain through quantum entanglement. There's the ability to access and be influenced by cosmic wisdom, if you will, divine guidance or or following the way of the Tao. And you know Penrose put these Platonic values or proposed that these Platonic values, including mathematical truth, aesthetic and ethical values, are built into the universe, the Planck scale as patterns. And our conscious thoughts are influenced uh, by the, these Platonic values. So it's conceivable that we have uh, influence uh, by this cosmic wisdom, if you will. And the third thing would be, you know, afterlife that we've talked about, that the possibility that consciousness can exist uh, after, after the body dies, at least, uh, at least temporarily, and perhaps be recycled in, in reincarnation. So there's cosmic wisdom, there's cosmic immortality, and there's cosmic truth, goodness, harmony, and evolution. And that's God. Well, we hope so. Okay. <laughs>